Hey, Ray from LoveyRV.com here, and today I am going to install my Sea Level Mark II tank level monitors. So I'm here at my uh, storage yard, and we're going to get to work. Got all my stuff laid out. So there's the tank level system I showed you in the previous video. So what I'm going to need to uh, complete the job is I got a soldering iron and some. Um, shrink tube here so I'm not going to use butt connectors I'm going to actually solder it I think it's a better connection myself um, I need some duct tape and that's to hold the the sensors in place before I actually stick them they have like a 3M sticking sticky back on them you peel it and it sticks right to the tank but you want to you want to mount it with tape first just to make sure everything's working before you do that final stick and also I picked up some acetone and that's gonna be I'm gonna clean the, the place where I'm gonna stick it to the tank um, I've got lots of tools of course and I gotta drop a lot of the chlor chloroplast uh, underbelly so I got a, a impact driver with a, a 3 8 drive on it and something to collect my nuts and bolts scissors odds and ends and for power because I'm not hooked up I got an extension cord here running into my inverter so I can power my soldering iron there. And I also got this, this is a, a pad we have, we use in the back of our truck for the, the dog and stuff, so it'd be really nice to lay on. So let's go inside and, and check out what, uh, I want to pull that, that panel and see what kind of wiring I'm going to be faced with. Okay, just between the main room and the bedroom is the, the sucky panel they install. So you probably recognize this if you have an RV. If you don't, it's next to useless. It has a battery monitor here. But you can see it's just got uh, low, fair, good, and charge, almost useless. Um, we've got all my tank levels. So if I click that, you can see it's E, one-third, two-thirds, full. Right now it's reading full. I know for a fact there's probably only one-third in there. Black tank says it's full. Yeah, there's only a little bit in there. Gray, eh, maybe sort of accurate, I don't know. Galley, definitely not that. So, And that's the way it's been for years. You know, most of it worked. It's Actually, the fresh water worked for a lot of years, but just in the, the last summer, it stopped working. It's kind of one of the things that sort of motivated me to change out this panel, too. And, of course, I got the water pump on and off, and the, and the water heater gas mode on and off. So let's pull this thing apart and see what's going on behind it. This little thing that opens. There we go. So there's some of the wiring. Uh, get some screws and pull that right off. Or a screwdriver. Let's hang on a sec. Oh my god. Well at this point if I didn't have 30 years of electronics repair experience I'd be a, a little scared right now. <laughs> Check that mess out. So, I'm going to have to go through and figure out what all this is. The problem with RVs is, is they change the wire codes as they go through it. You know, normally an automotive 12 volt, your red is your uh, positive 12 volts and your, your blacks are ground. But, in most RV wiring, they kind of copy the house. AC wiring and they go with uh, most of your blacks are positive and your whites are uh, are ground or negative. So the problem is they start interchanging the two and it can be kind of confusing. But it looks like here, seems here we've got these red wires coming in out off of a red, uh, looks like a striped wire. <laughs> Anyway, that seems to have 12 volts on it, and it kind of makes sense where it goes. Seems to have fairly thick wires going to your pump switch and your heater switch, so I'd assume that's the, the positive side. This white bundle is probably all your, your grounds, and, and I did take my multimeter and measured the two, and that's positive, and that's your negative voltage. All the other wires Here's your uh, display. So that 
I don't know, I'm going to have to measure that, but I'd assume maybe the the red wire might be a uh, positive wire and the white might be ground. These might be the sensor wires. Oh, crap. Anyway, I'm going to have to spend some time with my multimeter here and kind of sort this out in my mind. I'm just going to do some video footage here just for my own <laughs> my own uh, use, just in case I screw up when I take this all apart. I don't know where anything went. Funny enough here, you look, see if you can get close, see? There's like loose wires into this ground. I hate these crimp connector, connectors they use. Let's jam it in there. Oh well, maybe it'll work. So what happens if it doesn't? Get the weirdest intermittence going on in your trailer and you have no idea what the heck's going on. Anyway, enough slag in the RV companies. Let's try to figure this out and clean it up. So I'm sort of going to divide and conquer this. Um, I took off the butt connector and this looks to be all the the ground wires so I've, I've put them all together with a nice solder joint. This appears to be the main power coming in. If you look at this wire that's like what they use for a main 12 volt circuit feed. I've seen it on the on the lights when I was working on that so that looks like what that is. So now that I know I have my power and ground the new uh, control panel is not going to need a lot of this wiring so I just have to figure out what does what and then I can figure out uh, from there what to hook up. So first I'm gonna cut this power because I don't need the split power the new panel just needs the one main 12 volt in and then it just needs the one ground in then I just have to figure out my pump output um, my heater output and the heater light output and then of course there's the, the sensor wires to sort out after that. So let me start cutting things apart here. Let's kind of simplify this mess. When I uh, to do this the soldering hook them up, I just make I just make a hook on each wire so that it has a uh, you know mechanical um, connection, won't pull apart. And then I just bathe all that in solder so I get a really good connection. And then of course the the heat shrink tubing after that. Okay, so going by the, the coloring code here, I've attached the red gauge to my power in on my rig, soldered it up and put some heat shrink tubing on it, and the black is ground, so I've attached the black to the main one. So now I'm going to go through and do the Let's just do the pump output first. Yellow, it says. Yellow. There's yellow, so now I just have to figure out what the pump output is on, on here. Look for the pump. So I'll use my multimeter and measure which one of those is, is the pump output. Okay, figured it out. So there's your pump switch, and this red one was was part of the the 12 volt power in. Uh, the purple one's going to be the output. You notice it's quite thick. You're going to there's the pump. I think uh, there's a fuse in this system which I took out um, while I'm working on it. That's a seven and a half amps little blade fuse. So uh, the pump's going to draw a fair bit of current. So it's got the thicker wire going out. This white stuff is all your uh, grounds, and that's probably that's for the the pump light that's a, a lit a lit switch so when you switch it on that lights the LED inside so I'm gonna want to use the purple out and it'll connect to yellow on my uh, new panel so let me uh, splice that in 
there we go. So we got the pump output connected. I decided to get rid of some of these butt connectors. I don't I don't really like them. So I got rid of that purple wire and I've connected straight to where it was butt connected to this white and green wire going off to the pump. So next we got the water heater and it's the same idea. Got the red wire as you power in. Looks like we got a gray wire coming out. Power out and the ground. And then this pink wire looks to be the the LED wire for uh, when it's in uh, not starting. As when it starts it goes out, so it's sort of a an indicator light. So we'll hook up that to the, the wiring on the new uh, panel. Getting there, getting there slowly, simplifying this mess. There we go. Starting to get a bit simpler. Okay, this stupid thing can leave now. So my last hookup here looks right. As you see, this uh, kind of ribbon. This is, I assume, is going to be the ribbon for all the the different tank sensors that are existing. Um, you can see there's a white one there going off, connecting up to the ground there. So all the, the new one needs is the blue. And the other three won't be needed. So I just need to hook up the blue now. And I'll have my uh, wiring all complete for the, for the meter. Cool. Nice and neat. So let's pop that fuse back in do a quick test here. Didn't blow when I put it in, so that's a good sign. Okay, there's a battery voltage, 13.4. That's a good sign. Okay, well, it stands for open, I assume, so that makes sense. Yeah, I haven't put those on yet, so I'd assume they're open. Let's give the pump a try. Good to go. And final one is the heater. I don't hear it yet. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's been in storage, so maybe it took a while to pressurize the line. Oh, and fire right away. Maybe I turned on the empty tank. <laughs> Let me go check. Okay, looks good. Yeah, I just had to go prime the, the the gas line, turn on all the stove burners. It's been sitting in storage for a few weeks now. Okay, so there we go. Next thing I'll go underneath the rig. All the brainy work's done. Now I got to get underneath there and pull the bottom apart and start getting those uh, those sensors in place. Awesome. Okay, fun times. So I pulled a few of my flaps open down here and I found the, the ribbon wire. Um, it seems to be in a nice spot of, on all the tanks. So I'm going to want to splice into the white and the blue in that. So on the Cougar I have two tanks very close together and both the, the sensor areas are very close together. Tough one's going to be the galley tank. It's located between the tires and in a bit. But I think I'm going to start with the fresh. My fresh water fill is right at the back and the tank straight under it. So let me crawl under there and I'll give you a look at what I'm faced with. Okay, there we be. You can see the end of the ribbon cable comes down here. So I got my blue and my white I can connect onto easy enough. I think I'm going to mount the sensor right here. Right about here, looks like there's a nice amount of space there. 
measured the tank. The tank's about seven inches deep, but you can see down here, this is the, the water pickup. So you want the sensor to be above that to uh, read properly. So I think I'm going to have to cut it and make it about a six inch long strip. And then mount it right there. So I'm going to clean all this with uh, acetone first so I have a good surface. And then we'll just uh, put it in place first with some duct tape. Okay, let's get to cutting that. See, six inches puts me right at that spot right there so I can cut through that gap there. A sharp pair of scissors and that should give me a perfect size for that tank. There we go. Um, because I'm doing the fresh water I don't have to cut any tabs off the top here. So the fresh water is the default one. Um, when I mount it to the tank it says in the instruction book to always go to the right. You don't want the leads going to the left or they'll interfere with the pickup. Um, also it says don't mount it close to metal or the metal frame can interfere so where I'm mounting it's away from the frame. So clean that up and I'll get that mounted and I'm going to hook up these wires to blue and the black to the white and then we'll see if we have a reading. Okay let's check fresh. 94% so that is about right. Um, I was mistaken when I thought it was near empty. I can actually physically see the water in there, so that's looking good. Now I'll go attach the other three. Okay, well, a lot of crawling around under the rig trying to get into very tight spaces. It's always hard to retrofit something, but uh, so far I got all the strips soldered up to the wiring. I found the blue and white wires. It's able to solder them in. So um, I've put temporary uh, tape, taped them onto the tanks. Now I got to try to calibrate the position. Let's go back in and have a look at uh, see what they look like. Okay, there we go. So water pumps on. Okay, so fresh, 88, dry gray, 38%, galley 50, black 88. Okay, well at least I'm getting percentage readings on all the tanks. I've had enough for today, all that crawling around, so I think I'm going to hit the hay for today, but uh, I'll be back tomorrow to... Uh, Try to uh, calibrate everything, get those pads in exactly the right position before I uh, peel off the tape and tape them on. But that was a good day, I got lots done. And also I'm going to have to figure out uh, how I'm going to mount this. Looks like they cut a really weird hole in here. <laughs> so it's not going to fit right, I'm going to have a gap. So I think what I'm going to do is cut a hole for this and then I'm going to get myself a nice backing plate so it looks nice sitting up there. Okay, stay tuned. I'll be back tomorrow. Well, another day and we'll continue on. So I stopped in at a hardware store and found this really nice uh, wall for lights or plugs or something like that. Anyway, it's going to fit perfectly. I just have to cut out that center tab and it'll slide through. And then that'll mount on that onto the wall. I think it's going to look pretty sweet. Doesn't look too bad. <clears throat> so I, uh, I just cut out a bigger opening with a little keyhole saw. This stuff's pretty easy to cut through. Mounted the plate, mounted this, drilled some holes through the metal, and mounted some screws on there. So yeah, it looks good. Still all working in there. Okay, so I'm going to take you underneath uh, to the tank sensors again. Uh, I've been thinking about something overnight and uh, deciding to, to uh, change, change something on the sensors on the waste tanks. Let's go down below. Underneath the rig, I'm at my gray tank here. I'm going to show you a problem I'm having 
These tanks they put in here have quite the rounded bottoms. Really rounded, in fact. And uh, the sensors have to be mounted to a flat surface. So, let's get my tape measure. Look at my tape measure here. Get it in place. You can see the tank's actually over seven inches deep, but the amount of flat space I have is more about five. You can see where the tank starts to curve around six. So if I have the, the sensor cut for six inches, I'm going to have a problem with it uh, sticking to the tank when it curves down there. Also, I'll be flexing the sensor, which that seems not very good. So I contacted the Garnett company and asked if, if the sensor can be cut even shorter. And it can be cut down to four and a half inches, so that's what I'm going to do for the waste tanks. I'm less concerned about the measurement when they're completely empty. I'm more concerned about making sure I have an accurate measurement when they're full, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to change these sensors. I'll Cut, out, cut them off further. I'll just show you that. There's the black tank sensor, so maybe you can sort of see a little better what I mean, see it. I want to be below the top of the tank, but unfortunately you see how that piece hangs down and the tank curves quite a bit, so unfortunately I'm kind of stuck in between with these tanks. Gonna to have to go a little shorter and hope I get some accurate readings out of the shorter piece. There's the gray sensor pad. So you can see I had cut it at six inches. Well, I can go an inch and a half back, and there's just one more spot here I can cut to shorten it right up to uh, four and a half. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but uh, you can see where I had snipped off the tab that says gray there. That's to uh, tell the the programmer that uh, which tank it which tank it is. You cut that tab off for gray. I cut the other tab off for black over there and then uh, gray and top to mean galley and no tab for fresh. So I'm going to go and uh, cut those back and reinstall them again with tape and we'll look at them again take another measurement. I just want to quickly point out I've sort of screwed myself by not uh, really paying attention to the the measurement of my tanks before ordering this product. Uh, the product comes with this 710 ES sender and you can see I've had to cut this sender all the way back to here so I only have three sections left to, to do the measurements um, so what I'm thinking from reading is that's going to lower the resolution of it and I'll have a less accurate uh, measurement I, now that I've reread the the ordering page I see that there's an optional sensor or sender down here called the 710 JS and it's meant for uh, shorter tanks shorter tank walls like I have and its segments come in and these are one inch segments like that so I probably could have ordered one of these and had five segments of uh, inch segments there instead of only having three so that was a major dope. It'll still work, but it won't have as fine of resolution as, as this sender, sender pad would have. Oh well, live and learn. Okay, well we're about 90% installed. Um, I still have it, uh, all the sensors taped in place, but uh, I don't want to do the final stick down until I've had a chance to experiment by filling the tanks and emptying the tanks, checking them to see if it's reading correctly. I can't really do that here in storage, so I'm going to wait a couple of weeks. We're going to pull the RV out of storage and go into an RV park that's literally a couple blocks away. So I won't. T I'll just kind of put a few screws in the bottom, and then when I get over there, I can continue on. All I really have to do is find the, the best place for those sensors so they, they read the most accurate. And then um, on, the, on the side of the tanks, the, the tanks are a bit uh, kind of the, not really flat. They've kind of got a, a rough exterior. So they say you should uh, maybe take some sandpaper and sand down that to get a, a little better 
uh, adhesion of the sensors and then uh, I'll clean it up with acetone mark out exactly where I want the sensors and then do the final peel the 3M tape and do the final stick from there so I think what I'll do is uh, once I have it installed the way I like and use it for a week or two I'll come up with a, a third video with a total uh, review of how I like it how it's performed and maybe go through some of the setups and different diagnostic things that are included in that so thanks for watching till next time Ray from Love Your RV Cheers